Hey, what's up everyone? If you were ever wondering if there was a video that explained the creative filters available to you in Cubase, well wonder no more, cause this is that video. Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro 11. What I'm gonna show you today is the creative filters available to you in Cubase. Now when I say creative filters, I'm not talking about the high pass and low pass filtering you'll do in the mixing section. That can be accomplished either with the pre section on your preamp. So if we open up the channel strip, you'll see uh, if you switch to your equalizer from the channel strip, the channel settings, you have your pre uh, here. That's a high cut, AKA a low pass or a low cut, AKA a high pass. We can listen to what that does. And then the low cut, AKA the high pass does this. So that's the easiest, most accessible version of your uh, filters. But I'm not talking about those, I'm talking about creative filters. Now you can also, what I do for filtering most of the time is use frequency, which is included with Cubase. And I use that filtering module. So if you choose cut, then you can choose the actual slope, uh, whether it's 6 dB, 12 dB, 24 dB. So if we choose a 24 dB cut, but you can change the slope. So you get a little bit more granular control and frequency, but I'm talking about neither of those. I'm talking about the creative filters. So if you try to put in an audio insert, uh, what you can do actually is organize your presets by vendor by clicking on this little arrow here. So you can sort by category and you'll see filters. And, uh, or you can sort by vendor and here's the Steinberg filters. I'll choose Steinberg filter. And I know that in presentations, you're supposed to start with the most impressive stuff, but I'm gonna start with the least impressive one, I think, which is dual filter. And we'll open up dual filter. What it is, you can see from the UI, is you get two filters and you can boost or lower their resonance and change their position. So it's basically a uh, low cut or a high cut and you can band pass and you can use this creatively. So And I mean, this is fine, but I don't really know what it's useful for. It's not as useful as the others. So this is my least favorite filter, the dual filter. Now for the next filter I'm gonna show you, it's actually my favorite one that's included with Cubase. It's called the Morph filter. So I'll unsolo this and we'll go back to the beginning of the track and I'll add it to the drum bus. So here's the Morph filter and that's also available under Steinberg filters, Morph filter. We'll open it up and uh, now remember, this is on the drums. So this little uh, cue in the middle, this little blue dot, uh, the vertical axis affects the, re uh, the morph factor, and that's between your high cut and your high filter and your low cut. And then the horizontal factor affects the frequency range. And you can get some trippy stuff as you were hearing through the drums there. And you can choose multiple filter shapes, whether it's 6 dB, 12 dB, 18, 24, and then uh, these, uh, the bandpass filters as well. Uh, I find this to be an excellent useful tool if you're trying to create DJ type music. So if we solo these drums. Uh, you can get some cool sounding stuff going on with those. The next filter we'll look at, I'll, I'll use this piano track, is let's uh, look at the step filter. So if I just solo the piano track. So the step filter, it's like you're turning a knob, but it actually does it step by step. So if we switch the rate to 16th notes, you'll hear these steps come faster. And of course you could determine the number of steps. So we can go to four steps and have it be 
high, low, high, low. And uh, you can switch the resonance as well. So if you want like high resonance, just the resonance to climb. And you can switch the bass cutoff. And you can use the uh, output or the uh, mix and output to sort of create a parallel effect and switch your filter type. So if you want this to be a low cut, it's here. And of course you can add the hard clipping and let's make this an eighth note or something. And you hear that hard clipping. This is an awesome creative filter if you want stuff to change on every eighth note or 16th note or quarter note and have just a sharp ramp and where the cutoff is or where the resonance is on uh, your specific filters. And of course, you don't get to choose the uh, filter type. You just switch between low cut, high cut, and band pass, but it's still pretty rad. Uh, so that's the step filter. The next one we're gonna look at, and I'll keep using the piano, is the tone booster. So the tone booster allows you to add resonance to a specific filter, so. And you can switch uh, peak mode and band mode. So that can give you some spaced out effects using sort of the resonance curves of a peak filter or a band filter. Uh, the tone booster works great. And the final one we'll look at is Wawa. Now there is a built-in Wawa, we'll bypass this. And I'll use it with a guitar because that makes the most sense. <laughs> And it sounds fine. The only thing is, even with tweaking this, you can tweak where the frequencies start, uh, the width of the low, the width of the high. And it's great, uh, but I, I mean, even though you have all this control, I find a lot of times the wah-wah pedals in Guitar, like if you're using it for guitar, and I use wah-wah pedals for like Rhodes or guitar mostly, but the ones that come included in guitar modules like Amplitube, I think they sound better. Let's, for instance, bypass this and listen to the Amplitube wah. Turn it on. But obviously these uh, guitar wahs, even if we use the one included with Cubase, the VST amp rack, They have fewer controls than the Wawa does if you're using the filter version. So you can't control high and low gain, you can't control high and low width, and you can't control high and low frequency. So uh, this is a reasonable choice if you're trying to dial in a specific type of Wawa sound. Although for my money, I think a lot of the hardware emulation Wawa sounds included in guitar modules sound better. So this has been just a quick walkthrough of the creative filters available to you in Cubase. You can use them for anything. My personal favorites are the Morph filter and the Step filter, because those are the most extreme filters. Although there are some other ones like the Dual filter and the Tone booster that you may find useful in the mixing stage or even to use as a creative effect. Now, I hope you found this useful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.